Hello, listeners of the Art Versations podcast. Welcome back, or welcome if this is just your first tune in. This is Art Versations, a meditative conversation about the artistic process. If you're a longtime listener, you'll know that I'm your host, Brie, like the cheese. I am a performer, a choreographer, and a teacher based in Toronto, Canada. I started this podcast to provide artists the platform to reflect on their projects and hopefully connect the arts community in this weird time of isolation. Thank you so much for tuning in and make sure to subscribe so we can continue to connect. Whether you're an artist yourself or an art lover or both, please, please stick around. We would love to have you. Here we go into this week's episode. My guest this time around is a sweet, sweet gem of a human. We were connected through the team at Frog in Hand, the Mississauga-based company, um, as she was a member of their summer company this year. She is a Calorie Paitu dance and theater artist, as well as the founder of Nantanki Creations. We spoke about her many projects and endeavors and what the process was like to create the crazy, crazy cool show, Stories in the Woods. Please join us for some art chatting and some conversing. And don't forget to grab a snack or a drink or something. Treat yourself. Here is episode seven with Ankita Alamona. Brie, this is a thing. I we can <laughs> rabbit hole the crap out of this we interview. Can. I'm telling you. Let me bring I feel like I'm a professional bit, rabbit holer. So <laughs> you're you're gonna have to you're gonna have to bring me back. Uh, Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm so happy you're here and that we're, we're finally making this work in person. Yeah. It feels really nice to like be in a space where I don't have to look at a screen. And that being said, I'm going to close my laptop right now. <laughs> yes! We're away from the screen. It's yeah, nice. it does. It does feel really good. How are you feeling in this current state and time? I am... I feel like summer just went oh my gosh yes it was a really busy like really busy summer um but I'm feeling good I'm feeling that you know September is kind of a new year Mm. it has that energy yes Uh, I'm feeling the new year energy um and I'm just trying to remind myself to slow down as well Mm. it's very important with so much happening right now my brain is a little I've been having this problem of my brain will just like just have so many things going on and then my body is wanting to slow down mm. or my body wants to run around but my brain is just off. Mm, they're, they're never like they're not aligning right now. <laughs> yeah. So they're constantly having this argument. Right. Slow down, speed up, do this, sit down, you know. Mm. Uh, so but I think as we're getting into this new year, I think they're going to... I feel they're going to align. They've been a little misaligned. Now they're going mm. to align. So A little off track, a little bit yeah. going up in different directions. Yeah. Well, that's so much has happened, too. you know? I know. Well, and it's like... So much has happened. Based on the week, sometimes things are changing. Yeah. In terms of protocols, in terms of how many people can gather. It's like... Yeah, it's hard to, like, really navigate your career when, you know, everyone is supposed to, like, change up how they actually work. Yeah. You know, the environments and stuff. I get that. How we interact with each other, too. Right? Yeah. So And we were just talking before this, too, about, like, community and how much we need it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I was so... I was genuinely super excited to come here to your place because... It's nice to see spaces. It's nice to see how people are engaging in their spaces. Mm. And that's something that I think I've I've been missing that I enjoy seeing spaces and I get ideas from people, their spaces, mm-hmm. how they're doing things. Yeah. So sometimes your own space can be, you know, you can of course we always are changing our own spaces too, but you need that inspiration, you totally. know, sometimes. Yeah, you so. need to be reminded of like things other than yourself absolutely at least I feel that for me I'm like 
so caught up in what I'm doing and then I mm. like forget that like there's so much more to learn and it also I feel like it makes me such a like selfish artist because I'm just like only thinking about what I know and putting those blinders on kind of thing I don't know it's I hard. think you have to do that sometimes though true I think that I think that is sometimes the hardest thing about being in a close relationship or proximity to an artist personality or because I know that my family, I think sometimes they struggle with how much I just sometimes need to go off and, you know, be by myself mm. for extended periods of time to just, you know, the sensitivity suddenly to things is just you feel so oversensitive that, right. okay, sometimes you need to like exit, be in your isolated space. Mm. And I think you have to have family or friends or people, if you're in a relationship with somebody, partner. Um, True. That who really understand that need too, because I feel artistically our minds, and I, this is a pretty common trait in artists that I've noticed. We need our time mm. alone, right? Yeah, in isolation. Yeah. Um, to and we almost create little play spaces for ourselves, um, and that's really we just need that. That's mm-hmm. how ideas come. That's how, and that's part of our work. Mm. I think it looks to outside, maybe society, that we're just, you know, sleeping a lot or... Right, yeah. <laughs> whatever it is. Sometimes sometimes sleeping <laughs> is legitimately an important part of my work. Yes. I feel, <laughs> I feel like this part of my day is going to be dedicated towards <laughs> just lying down. Just doing nothing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a whole lot of nothing so yeah. that in, you know, eight hours I can do everything Absolutely. all the time. Absolutely. It's a very different flow. It's yeah. a very different kind of rhythm inside of us. That's so true. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm so I'm so happy that you're here. I'm so glad that we met, too, virtually. Mm-hmm. Um, Isadora from Frog in Hand connected us. And, you know, I think... As, as artists, there's so much time that we have away from other people, and like we wouldn't have met had this not come up. So I'm thrilled to talk about you about your work um, because you have this collective that you spoke spoke about before we started recording, where you do show the process, right? Yeah. And yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for a pronunciation try here. Please let me know if it's wrong. Nautanki? Yeah, Nautanki. Yeah, okay. super. Yeah. And so it's a creation-based collective of... You had, like, 22 artists at one point. Is that still the case? So we had for we had our Nautanki Creations uh, Festival just recently. We recently just wrapped that up. Um, and, yeah, 22 artists were involved. Wow. From Canada and from India. Incredible. So... What a connection. It was it was great. It was a <laughs> lot. It was a lot of artists to manage. <laughs> <laughs> so many people. Yeah. Almost like because I guess you haven't had that many ever. Is this like your first big? This is festival? so. This is our second festival. Okay. Um, we were a little over a year old now, as a collective. And um, last year our festival was it was very much a very solo endeavor mm. it was literally i was playing with editing in the digital realm for the first time and i just had a festival showing some things like some experiments gotcha some little short films that i was creating i like to call i called the festival a tasting platter festival mm. of performing artists working in the digital realm <laughs> now who have now become very independent low budget filmmakers <laughs> So it's a mishmash of things. It's just a bunch of experiments. And, gotcha. Um, so that's what it was last year. Mm. And so this year I really felt um, I it was good last year to do things. I was developing my own skills, mm. honestly, to try to... I wasn't used to working digitally at all. Um, I know you're also a performing artist and or, or dancers. And, yeah. Um, I had not put one thing out digitally ever, Mm. not one video, um, not one, and no creations. Um, so that was a very new, and I realized that if I was going to do that, I needed to, to work on my skills. I had not, I had edited a very, very short, you know, two minute, uh, dance Mm -hmm. video, that that's all I had done, <laughs> so it, and even that took a lot of like I'm convincing sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that I can do this on iMovie. No, I get it. Um, so I I really I really the first few months before our festival I really 
was just really working on my skills. And I felt that at a point that I had experimented, I just wanted to share. Mm. And I, that sharing was this festival and was the opening of Not Donkey Creations. And, oh, wow. and then this summer, I was like, yeah, it's great to do things by yourself as a beginning because you need to learn things before you can just... But this summer, yeah. um, Nidhi, Nidhi Badgar and I, Nidhi is my... Uh, you know, partner at Not Donkey Creations. Okay, and you're the co-creators. Yeah, we're the okay. co-creators, and um, we joined forces. So when Nidhi came, that was like a whole other energy, which was amazing. Um, and then together, there was this idea that what if, you know, I I really said, oh, I would love for there, uh, there to be another festival, but mm. um, this time let's involve more people, you know, more artists and. Um, and this was also during the second wave happening in India. Oh, wow. So there was... Yes, okay. There was a really big global crisis. India was being put on the hot seat. Uh, and we both are we both are from India. Uh, you know, our roots are in India. And mm-hmm. we've lived in India. She's also lived in India for about five years. Same with me. Okay. Um, so we really felt connected to the artist community and what's happening in India we felt sensitive to it. Absolutely. Um, I imagine that's very difficult to like navigate when you can't be there. It is because you feel that you yeah. can see the struggle happening. I remember hearing about um, it and just being and like so sympathetic about it. And, totally. But knowing that I couldn't do much, you know. Yeah, you yeah. just feel... Well, I spent a lot of the beginning of the pandemic in India. Oh, okay. Um, so I was in India for about seven months oh, wow. uh, of the very beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, I was staying with my nana and nani, my grandparents. Um, and that's where I started. I started everything with my grandparents mm-hmm. and um, being in that house. And they really saw me try. They also witnessed me trying to navigate the space. They're always very encouraging. They're like, yes, you're working hard, oh. you know, good job. You I know can you, do it. I know your parents you are know. artists, but are they artists? They are, I would say that they're artists yeah. too, for sure, because oh. they're very artistically inclined. Um, my nani, I feel she doesn't say she's an artist, but I find her very artistic. Mm-hmm. Um, she's also in just how she expresses herself. And I, mm-hmm. and my, my nana is a writer. Oh, fantastic. He's a short story writer. Just like his son, right? Uh, yeah, my, well, my, that's from my uh, mom's side. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, from my okay. mom's side. So, but that is how my that is how my dad and my my (laughs) grandpa that's how they connected through the writer connection. Yeah, yeah. um, So they helped you along as as you were trying to you know create a collective amidst the pandemic early beginnings and stuff. Yeah, they're very supportive. That's fantastic. I feel I had a lot of conversations with them. Naturally, Mm -hmm. I was living with them and they were my people. Yes, yeah. Um, I feel I had a lot of conversations with them about you know, what I'm thinking and Mm. because I feel my grandparents, I feel, I feel really blessed that I feel I can fully be myself with them. I think they know my positives. They know my negatives. Mm -hmm. I feel they've seen my full personality, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. Um, and I feel blessed that they've been, they're very supportive. They've always been very supportive. Um, I lived with my grandmother for a couple of months of the pandemic as well. And it's like, it's really, really nice to, like you say, like open up to someone who already really knows so much about you. Completely. They've watched you grow up. They, you know, babysat you many times probably too. Like it's like just knowing that there's a little bit of an acceptance already there Completely. really helped me to to also like ask her about how, like what she's feeling right now. Because, yeah. you know, it's like, you know... It, age is such a gap but it really isn't at the same time especially in a pandemic when we're all you know trying to figure things out yeah yeah for that age group i mean the pandemic has been incredibly challenging Mm, i feel the elderly population and the youngest population i feel have had it the 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 toughest. toughest yeah yeah um because at least us as a generation we have engaged with digital world and we it's not that we're completely used to it but we have had that engagement already yeah um i, well, I imagine that helped you a little bit as you're making these videos or, or you know inter- yeah. interweaving yourself into the digital space Definitely. for this festival like you know it's nice to have a little bit of experience already in it and not be you know totally foreign to it yeah i just finished a i just finished a diploma in movement 
and mixed media. I was studying in India. You just finished, say that one more time. You finished a diploma in movement? In I was studying in India. That is a fantastic sentence. Just so, in general. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, continue. Yeah, it was, I mean, yeah, that was my, I had just finished, I was just a graduate, a recent graduate. Oh, of, in 2020, I guess. While you were there, or? I think I graduated in 2019. Oh, okay, before, before, um, okay. But yeah, before, I was a student. I, I'm always a student, but mm. I was also formally a student okay. um, when the pandemic hit. Gotcha. So I had just finished my one-year diploma in movement and mixed media in, a, in Bangalore. Wow. Uh, and then I was continuing. I felt very clear. I could feel a very... I felt a connection to Galeri Baidu, this form of martial arts. Yes, you were telling uh, that me. I, I've, stu- I've studied and I'm wow. still studying. Um, and I decided to continue that train. I thought, okay, this feels right in my body. It feels like I found my form that wow. I meant to do. And I decided to go to Kerala, which is a, considered one of the one of the birthplaces in India of Galeri Baidu. Um, and I continued. I trained there and then kind of got... I was going to complete in my head. I wanted to do at least minimum one year, but then because of the pandemic, got a little interrupted. <laughs> so, just a little. <laughs> just a little. Um, so, so yeah, but that, so they, I feel my grandparents were seeing me at a time where also I was coming out of that Gurukul system. Like I was living with my teachers and, oh, wow. um, so I was in a very, I was in for a period of time. I feel I was able to keep that discipline, but then, you know, the pandemic brought with it a whole bunch of Hmm. challenges and and pain and wondering when are you going to, when are we actually going to be moving through this? And, um, but yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't even know what I was saying originally. <laughs> Brie, this is a thing. I We can rabbit hole the crap out of this we interview. Can. I'm telling you. Let me bring I feel like I'm a professional bit, rabbit holer. So you're, you're going to have to, you're going to have to bring me back. Um, bring it back because I do want to talk. I was like, what did we even start with? Where are you going, Ankita? This is just, God. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's my I'm just warning you now. The rabbit hole is a real thing. Okay, so. well, let me, let me bring us back so this festival though that just just wrapped on the 16th with your now tanki organization yeah smitten and starstruck is the the title yeah what a fantastic title you're into that title i I absolutely love it i'm a very flirty person so i absolutely love it you're you're another flirty talking to a flirty i like it but i'm a flirty person too is this the same sort of time frame when you had your artist date series okay this yeah. is part of it. It's part of it. So you you it's were telling me before that you brought a bunch of people and you put them on blind dates almost, like a little collaborator blind date. Yeah. And two of these artists actually ended up like totally matching. I think they all matched. Oh, fantastic. Okay. I on, I cool. would say they all matched. It's such an interesting system um, to, to organize, to like be like, okay, we're going to look at a bunch of people's profiles, like, okay, Cupid, and then you put them together. Put them together. Tell me more about like what kind of work they made together at, in these pairings. Brie, it was super cool. Um, I feel, yeah, I think, so our, I knew we were going to have a festival. It was going to culminate. It, it kind of was a program, a series, mm. Artist Date series. Okay. It was a program over the summer, um, over the month of um, July. Mm. So it was a four-week. And some of the artists have been referring to it. They they said it felt like a residency, so oh. that is super nice. It's That's just good information for us for next time. Maybe we call it a, a residency, a one-month residency with Not Donkey Creations or... Mm-hmm. Um, but it was it was a program where we invited artists who were either based in Canada or India um, to apply, and then the artists could be from any artistic discipline. So and all the pairings we we were interested in the pairings being interdisciplinary. Love it. Um, so it was really cool. We had so many cool artists apply, and from that we really stressed that it was we're trying to make matches. So it was we had many individuals who are phenomenal but mm-hmm. um, we really stress that we're trying to find pairs in this so cool um, so we made eight pairs from it and uh, they worked together their own schedule for a month we had weekly uh, we called them community offering sessions or group dates oh. so they could date the rest of us look at this holy uh, yeah it's a total this is fantastic 
<laughs> you know, artists, we're so into this, you know? Just a full we, we all fall in love with each other. <laughs> exactly, and, yeah. Um, so they had their artist date for the month, but then we also had group dates once a week. Um, so that was kind of a chance for us to check in with each other, learn about each other more, mm. idea of a little created community for a period of time. Yeah. Um, and we really stressed. We tried to stress our festivals as sharing. So mm. please don't feel, you know, stressed about it. Feel well, this period is for you. You're the artist. We are artists trying to create something for artists. Yeah. Um, I, as an artist, was feeling I was so tired of mm. all these applications asking me for completed works. Right. Your work has to be finished, and you may or may not get in. And if you get in, you get $150, and thank you very much, and good night. You yeah, know, it just feels really like, like all the research is like you know done, but it's like no, no like I need time still. Need yeah, time. but you also, I we get pushed that final product. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel we need usually if we are trying to be supported through our creation process, we have to pay for that. Um, so could there be a format where you're supported through your creation process? You have people who are just constantly saying, look. We love you. Mm. We care about you. We want you to create. We want you to make a new friend. Mm. Like, just trying to give as much positive energy to this group Fantastic. that they just feel... Because our, our really our big thing was it's about rejuvenating our artist communities. That was our kind mm. of tagline. This is about rejuvenating artist communities. We are in need of rejuvenation right now. We're Absolutely. not in need of, you know, just creating for the sake of just throwing products out there. Um, so the festival was really a celebration of, and so we, we asked them, we said, you can tell us we're producing this. You tell us how you want your piece to be presented. Is Mm -hmm. it an experiment? Is it a sharing of process? Is it a work in progress? Mm. Um, is it a finished, is it finished? Um, it's, it's up to you. You, you just tell us whatever this is, whatever you need. And you have the space and just enjoy yourself and Brie, these artists, they brought it. I looked at their <laughs> pieces. I was, like, blown away. Oh, it fantastic. was so cool. They created some, um, like, I mean, they just created phenomenal work together. Yeah. Like, pieces and experiments and sharings. And, and that's so random so but great. lovely, you it's know? So great. To, like, see that it's that's so what happened yeah. after you mismatch them, match make them together, them you together. know? Yeah, that's fantastic. And then we had, I also want to do a shout out to, we had another series um, called the Moved Dance Series. Oh, yes. What is um, this? So it was part of the festival, and that was, we got so many applications, and 70% of applications were from India and wow. were from dancers. Oh, fantastic. So, we really felt okay if we can create another space as well mm-hmm. um, that uh, that says to these dancers six dance artists yeah. from India um, we said you know unfortunately we weren't able to find a match for you for this round but we really appreciated their work mm-hmm. and so we requested them to share three minutes of something um, at the festival and mm-hmm. that was also so lovely so I really yeah. our purpose is we want to show India was just getting you know so much heat from what's happening with COVID and the mm. second wave and um, as diaspora and having like both Nidhi and I lived in India where our roots are in India mm. uh, we really wanted to show you know there's there are many sides of the story and Absolutely. and art is one way of of sharing a story right oh my art gosh, is yeah. one way of seeing okay you think you know what's happening in a place look. I'm going to show you a bunch of artists working in India, Yeah, what they're doing, how they're exploring right now. All these artists are based in India. They've been working throughout COVID. Mm. And this is also what's happening there, by the way. The storytelling. You know, there is a big story. Different of, ways. Yeah, yeah. So That's incredible. I mean, Very needed. We have to figure out, you know, ways to respond. And if, if we also, I feel as diaspora, if we don't respond... If we don't try to take initiative and also try, we we need to really tell our own stories because mm-hmm. the media telling our stories is a giant mess. It's a no go. And mm-hmm. it, there's so much yeah. that is not represented there. And as artists, we're we're trying to we're trying to dig into pieces of the world, right? And yes. trying to show that. By the way, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. well, it I helps us as really... a community, as a Canadian and Indian community. Yeah, you know, to be um, more layered in the way that we work. You mm-hmm. know, it's I was saying before to you, like, so much of my work so far has been like just about me, and yeah. as much as yeah. you know, I, autobiographical work is can be great. 
it's like I just I know so little about what's actually going on and I wonder if to like being able to open our minds to other time kinds of stories and other kinds of processes is so mm-hmm. much ben- more beneficial for our work overall I think I advocate for both. Mm. I totally advocate for being in a bubble, too, (laughs) when you need to be. When you need to be, for sure. (laughs) I'm so pro also being in a bubble. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I think that we're very overstimulated Mm. as a society, as a generation. Yeah, especially online. So it can also, yeah, online. So I'm fine with whatever you need, if you need to be. I had one teacher... Um, when I was in India, one of my, my Bharat Naktyam dance teacher, mm-hmm. Meena Ma'am, um, she went to a very, you know, like very strict Gurukul, very, one of the top schools uh, for Bharat Naktyam. Uh, and mm. she spoke about how during her time, she was just immersed in Bharat Naktyam. Mm. That was her, she just didn't that. know anything else about the outside. She said, oh, I didn't know about the outside world and the politics of what was happening. And I felt, oh, I was just immersed in, and it was beautiful because she she spoke about how she, she realized when she went out she was starting to engage with the politics of the world and then, mm. but then I also feel like she spoke about the importance for me. I thought that was really beautiful that she also spoke about being bubbled in mm. a way, and how you also need to give yourself that time to be bubbled yes, to learn yeah. a discipline. I see. I think both are. It's okay to be bubbled, too. Yes, yeah. Whatever you need to do. I guess it's like, uh, for me, it's been such a forced bubble that I'm like, no! Yeah. <laughs> Let me out of my bubble. Yeah. I hate me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Well, now I, we've been in forced bubble, for sure. Yeah, the yeah, pandemic yeah. has been yeah. a, a whole next level. It's brought Please. me to, like, really, yeah. really look inward. And then, as a matter of fact, I feel like I also just really need to get out. Yeah. Um, but maybe it's, you know, I had to have one to have the other kind of thing. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Interesting. Yeah, so this festival, like, what an incredible way to be communal and and to see that the works, you know, came out successful. Sounds like it yeah, from your point of view. I That's was amazing. Incredible. Yeah. Um, now, of course, you're also here because you're representing Frog and Hand Summer Company. Yeah. Which is fantastic. Thank you for, for being their, uh, their rep because I was going to have Colleen on, but I've, I've already had her on as a on a past episode. Um, but to hear, too, from you as a cast member, um, you were one of 10 dancers in the company this summer. And you you all had, like, eight-hour days, like, or no, like, yeah, eight-hour days but for, like, eight weeks. like a, a Nine f- weeks. Nine weeks. Like, a nine full weeks. summer job. Yes. It's an incredible on. opportunity. I, I really, I can't wait to hear more about, like, what it was like rehearsing and taking classes and, and you know, being outside most of the time too. Like, I wonder, it, it, you spoke in the blog that you, that you really had a, a questioning relationship with nature and like almost, almost like, um, by default, you were going to build a different kind of relationship with, with the natural world. Like, I, I wonder if you can speak more to that. Yeah. I, I think the beautiful thing is the frog in hand team and family um, I do feel that they're true nature lovers. Mm. Yes. Um, and <laughs> That's very true. Very accurate. I do feel that they, through how they curated things, they just naturally would let us, they would create these times where it would be, you would be exploring nature. You'd be, we are so dependent on nature too, because our joke was, you know, that Colleen was the... Colleen called herself the local weather <laughs> lady. <laughs> and cause sometimes we... It's supposed to rain. It was supposed to be outside. And, and it was so great that there was this... It was... We were in conversation as artists with nature because we were very much dependent on... If it was a hot day, we were really feeling that. We're outside. Right. And so... And if... Um, and right away, just walking in the area... Um, I feel that there was things I got to witness and got to see because we were outside so much that I think if I was just, you know, having to be on my computer all summer, I would have no idea that, you know, the black winged, the red winged blackbird. Yeah. Go through like such an intense 
period of aggression when they're nesting. Oh, wow. um, you know, I feel I would I got to witness that. I got to hand. witness <laughs> those birds getting angry oh. <laughs> when we were too close to their nest. A um, real conflict of the birds. It bird was lovely. And I we got to witness this uh, you know, the blue heron the, how majestic the blue heron's wings are wow. and um, you know, Colleen one day she would she would one rehearsal we had, she's like, Everybody stop and come see the turtles. <laughs> That's amazing. It was great. <laughs> um, I would or, kill for that in rehearsal in a yeah, studio. Colleen <laughs> just said, Everybody, um, we're taking a turtle watching break. A turtle uh, watching come, break. Come here to the pond. I love um, that. So when it, when I was really reflecting for the blog, mm-hmm. um, I just realized that yeah, that's something that I really appreciated, and I, the show we were doing is so stories in the woods is super connected to. It is trying to comment, right? It Absolutely. is tr- making a commentary, it's a beautiful commentary in our relationship to yeah. nature. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and yeah, I, I always feel that that has to begin with. We can't just speak about saving. I feel like I've been part of a few different shows mm-hmm. um, related to even my own work. I look at environmentalism. I'm interested in in the topic of how we engage with nature and and what's what has been missing for me is. Um, you have to know what you're saving. Mm. You can't just say, save the forest. You need to you need to go into the forest and understand right. what you're trying to save. Um, and before you actually give yourself that time to explore your relationship to nature, you won't feel passionate about what the cause is. Mm. Wow. And I think that's almost a part of what our giant challenge as a society is that we're not giving ourselves enough time to feel passionate about nature. Because we're um, so locked in. Because we're so busy. Oh, wow. I hate that word, busy, honestly, but uh, it's a busy, busy culture. On the go, yeah. So much, like, hustle culture. It's hustle yeah, culture. Yeah, yeah. And we are also, the way we are starting to engage with nature is in a very drive-by way. Mm. We drive. We, we see it through our windows. And the show, know? like, invites audiences right there with you. Yeah. Right? Because you walk yeah. around. I, I saw it in 2019, and I absolutely love the fact that I could like move around with the show yeah you know you it's walk really cool. actually on the pavement yeah. or the grass that you're about to witness being and the logs on. yeah the area is so yeah right and cool like area. the small arms building like yeah. you know that that area is like truly in nature like it it's a forest <laughs> like, it is yeah I, I guess that's a nice way to you know having the audience come with you is really a nice way to be like hey listen like let's stop looking at our phones let's stop going in our cars for a second uh, for 90 minutes and and like be together in nature yeah did you have audience because you can see them right did you have audience members kind of maybe i don't know did they did they like a little bit like falter backwards if they you know (laughs) if they're like around the bushes and stuff i don't know maybe because they're not so into nature (laughs) i honestly from that perspective i I couldn't tell you because mm. I'm in the way I was in Swarm and the finale. So it's these, you know, you're meeting different characters. Along oh, the yes, way. yes. Yeah. Um, I see. But I heard, I heard from Andrew, Callahan, Alice, Colleen, who are the walking team, with yeah. the audience mm-hmm. throughout. Um, I heard that the audience was quite beautifully engaged with the, the, the path. Fantastic. Okay. Um, so good. I think that they embraced it. Mm. Um, I guess you kind of have to. And you're you not feel wearing your high heels from to them. that yeah. show. <laughs> Apparently, I think someone did wear high heels. Oof. I believe that one show, um, there was a report that you know someone came with high heels and. Oh my gosh! Good luck to their Achilles. Like, <laughs> I mean, you gotta look half fashion. We're we're all wanting. <laughs> everybody wants to bring the high heels up now. <laughs> yeah, I'm costumes. not. I don't relate to the high heels. You know, your costumes bad, are like like a little bit more dressed down, I believe, right? Yeah, they're yeah. very actually our costumes. I find our costumes quite masculine. That was okay. something I really enjoyed. I did I see reflected. a video on your did Instagram you about yeah. um, challenging those two energies, the feminine, the traditional, masculine, all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So that was a reflection from the process, I guess. This is something artistically I, I've been interested in mm. the masculine feminine energy what does that mean to engage with one or the other mm-hmm. and I kind of realized through wearing these you know these uniforms that we wear in the show yeah 
Um, is know, it the like jumpsuit, the blue jumpsuit? Yeah, this is that jumpsuit, okay. and there's a blue one, there's a white one. Mm. Noelle and Mariana, our costume, our amazing costume team. Um, they, it was really lovely. The design, and I, it's it's amazing because we're a pretty uh, female cast, right? Yes. The all ten hot. dancers were, were yeah. uh, you know, um, we're all women. But were you invited well, to, you know, show off your masculine sides as well? I guess through these costumes or through the movement. Was that a I conversation? Think through the summer, mm. in different ways, we were Fantastic. for sure because. Um, there's the company, you know, Colleen and Alice was our rehearsal director. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we all, there was a lot of interest in also martial arts. Fantastic. And so, which is, you know, a lot of martial arts practices are seen as, seen as masculine forms. Mm-hmm. And I feel it's lovely because there's a questioning of that. And that's part of also I felt was a great connect from our end that I was mm-hmm. really happy to to see how that questioning was happening. Yeah. Um, so I feel we did get to engage with uh, playing with these energies as 10 young women in the room, and it was quite cool. Cool. It was quite cool. I do think there are a lot of opportunities for us to, to play with. You know, Alice also um, was giving us training in stage combat. Um, oh, awesome. Um, different Oof. boxing techniques. Oh, wonderful. Felt like, yeah, about different boxing techniques, and um, yeah, it was cool. It was good. I enjoyed... Yeah. And it's something about, you know, when you, you put your hands in a fist and you're about yeah. to punch, it just feels good. You feels know? good, yeah. yeah. Mm. Hell yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Women can be aggressive. Yeah, Absolutely. oh my God. Absolutely. Very. I'm sure anyone can tell you, really, can be incredibly aggressive. Like. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit too much for you sometimes. <laughs> we, we have our time. <laughs> Be afraid. Oh. Be afraid. So yeah, so you have class outside, you have rehearsals outside, you have these like incredible, you know, uh, moments of just seeing animals everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. And then yeah, a connection to uh, your your you know not so presented masculine sides as well as these feminine works. I mean, and then yeah, as well like the story, the show is is a is a take on what's going on in the world. How do we save? the nature that has been completely destroyed by us. Mm. I find that to be very um, compelling as a story. I remember sitting there or, and walking around and being like, oh my God, this is me. Like, this is yeah. what I'm going through too. I'm, I'm, I'm stressed. I'm, I'm worried, but I do want to be in the action of yeah. it. Um, what, what kind of conversations or, or research did you do as a company to be more eco-friendly, to be more... Like, and just in rehearsal, I wonder. Yeah. I feel the conversations were, yeah, very natural. Mm. It's not that we necessarily sat down and said, okay, now today we're going to speak about climate change. And um, I feel it was more that from being in nature and being in the space Mm. and having, being encouraged, you know, go to the site, work in the site, what happens when you're there. Mm -hmm. Um, In that way, it was a more experiential it's more about the experience of being in nature and engaging with nature on a daily basis and yeah um and i think that was very yeah because i think we need to develop our connection to nature we can't really speak about what what we're fighting for unless we ourselves really believe in Mm -hmm. believe in it yes and i actually do think that takes the fact that we are working in the same spot pretty much like we did we started off somewhere else but then we eventually were mostly working in near the small arms inspection building oh, and really great so we had a chance to as dancers we like to go into our space mm-hmm. and we like to um a friend of mine i remember she would always say oh i always come half an hour before because mm-hmm. i need to warm up the space mm-hmm. with my energy i need to feel the space i need to have a conversation with the space yeah yeah um so the fact that we were in the space so much almost the entire, before leading up to the show, mm-hmm. we had, we were talking to the space, right? The space was talking to us. It was showing us what is happening there so we can also so respond as performers. And, yeah. Um, so that's really cool. So that's really cool. garnering exactly like the history of the summer company. Completely. Leading up Completely. to the showing at the end of, or at the beginning of August. Like, yeah, that's a very, um, I imagine that process to be very, you know, memorable. 
Completely. Because usually as performers, we only get to go into the yeah. stage space at the end. Like tech day. And it's like a very that's quick. It. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's a cool thing with... There was another site specific piece I did too, um, and it was the same. It, I w- it was in a yoga s- yoga space that I was a st- I was a practitioner. I was a student of that studio, and so I was in that space a lot over the one year. I see. And so then to do a show in that space, it felt this. It felt like oh, I'm having a conversation. It's just I'm just mm. talking to this room mm, that mm. I've been in a relationship with. Yeah. So if, it's a very different feeling. I, I really appreciate site specific work. Same. Uh, it's so it's a great. Come on, we have like stages everywhere. I know they're everywhere. They've been around play. for way Gotta too many play. years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Just being outside in the public. I mean, there's obviously like uh, the conversation about land acknowledgement and being on land. But yeah, you spoke a little bit about it too in, in the blog. Like, stay. Like you, you, you titled it "Staying in Process, Slowing Down, and Acknowledging the Land." I think those are the you know the three main points that that come up. They came up for you. Like that's. Um, you know that's an incredible summary of that of that process. Yeah, I'm sure. Completely. I also really enjoyed what you spoke about in the blog about, you know, and we talked a little bit about it too. The mm-hmm. two of I before we started recording, like not saying that we're just talented as artists, totally. that we have intellect, yeah. and most of the time the work that we do doesn't actually get shown to the public. Absolutely. Yeah, that was really huge for me. That really resonated with me. Yeah, our process is so. I'm I'm glad to hear that because I yeah our process is so. If, you, if once you get to talk to an artist about their process for how it's beautiful. Right? Oh my gosh, so many it's things my come thing out. It's do. the best thing. You you know, Bree. <laughs> you 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 put us in this chair. You talk to us. Um, it's so beautiful and. Um, I know we were saying before, I think as artists, that's our, our little hearts just want to be able to share mm-hmm. ideas. We are yes. just people with some ideas. That's really all we are. Yeah. And we're taking these ideas and we're putting them into artistic forms of expression. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a whole process. I don't think we ever just, I don't, I don't really meet artists who just are putting things out there without having some, there's this complex interweb of all these oh, yeah. ideas. It's very angsty, actually. It's, crazy. it's <laughs> yeah. like so much. Yeah. Um, so it is, it is really beautiful to be able to share. And I know why also sometimes we don't share process. Process is really sacred. Yes. Um, and I completely respect that too. And um, But sometimes I feel that if we can just share some parts of our process, our audiences will will understand um, that we're not just these yes. cute, playful beings in the world. Absolutely. We are, we are hardworking and uh, yeah, I, I, I personally refrain from using the word talented mm-hmm. um, when it comes to speaking about artists or, or anybody. Um, I feel like I had a music teacher in, in high school and Mr. Brown Shout out to Ms. Brown. Um, <laughs> not in high school, sorry, in middle school. Yeah, middle oh, school. Middle it's going, school. All, it's going way, way back. back yeah. um, and he specifically said to us, oh, when there, is a, when there is a neurosurgeon, they've completed a brain surgery. Hmm. You do not say, oh, that neurosurgeon is so talented. You say, that neurosurgeon is brilliant. Right, yes. But when a performer has completed a beautiful production you say wow they're so talented and it undermines the intelligence and the work and the effort and the but talented it makes it sound like it's god's gift like you didn't work for it you just Mm. you just appeared and you did something and it was amazing and yeah god has gifted you with this but that you know i mean not saying that God's gift. Yes, there might be some connections, but a lot of us of don't just have God's gift. Okay, no, a lot of us. That, that is yeah. just crazy. Yeah. I personally, I don't relate to just being talented at all. Um, I re- I have always been hardworking. Mm-hmm. I've always worked. Everything that has happened has been. Of course, God's gifts have been there. My parents are very supportive. I'm part of, uh, you know ancestors have put in energy and yes, yes yeah. that's not by no means I'm not saying it's me and um, but there has been work mm. not just my work the work of my family the work of my parents the work of the generations before there is for an artist to work the way that they work it is because there's been a lot of work around them as well absolutely and I think we need yeah. to we need to 
as artists almost I, I'm ready to leave the word talented. I, I don't I don't use that word personally. Um, okay. Like I'm ready it. to be like Goodbye, talent. Yeah, because, like... It's not just talent. That kind of undermines all of the hours that you've spent, like, yeah. you know, formulating your ideas and taking time to sleep and, you know, like, all of the process stuff yeah. that is just so natural to us and we do it and we get it done because we want it to look easy on stage. We want it to look, you know effortless as if we just stepped on from you know off the street like I think there is that natural ability that I have and that I've sort of come to love about my work and want to cherish and take care of however like I, I beat myself to death most of the time I'm overworked I'm you know I'm trying my hardest to and my smartest to to make something come to life out of nothing and that is not nothing Completely. Well, yeah. that might be our fatal flaw mm. as artists because wow. it is our job That's to make our right work there. look easy. <laughs> yeah, it's true. our job to make our work look easy. If you see an artist and you think that artist is working hard, mm-hmm. we we fail. Yeah. We are supposed to look like... If you look at... I used to figure skate for a period of time. and oh, nice. um, And I look at these figure skaters and I know a little bit, a small amount of the effort that goes into, but when you look at them... Oh, my gosh. It looks so easy. Tessa but, Scott, like... Oh, my gosh, yes. They put so many hours in. Yes. Yeah. And to make, like, their, you know, gold medal routine was... A huge, huge, huge endeavor. I've, I've heard. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's yeah. just and it's beautiful, and it's our work is to make it look easy. Exactly. People look at us and they're like, "Oh, it's just effortless. It's fluid. It's uh, beautiful. It's gold medal. It's yeah. talent. Yeah. You know these use all these words and <laughs> totally. Um, and that and then we we think, okay, yes, and, but uh, maybe it's also partly our disservice that we're not sharing mm. that. Oh. I just want you to know that I practice this many hours a day. Mm-hmm. I go to the studio this many times a week. Like I, there, we're putting in the work, mm. and we are artists are are bearers of tradition, of culture, of we're continuing history. Yes. We're we are con- trying to continue something in our bodies as dancers. We're continuing a form through our bodies. Yeah, and. Anyone who is really serious about their form knows that you you cannot just be talented. You need to put in the work, the hours, the repetition. Yeah. Um, the many rehearsals. Yeah. And then you and you will really see the difference between the practitioner who is putting in the work versus the person who's not. You yeah. can really you can really tell. Yeah, funnily enough, it all comes down to you it know. all you can really yeah. tell. Yeah. So. It also, I feel like, helps to long, longevitifies. That's not a word, but I'm making it a word. Yeah, longevitifies like the, <laughs> the lifespan of an artist, you know, yeah. like so that you're not like just throwing yourself up there, doing a bunch of backflips for fun, and then injuring yourself. Completely, you know. Yeah. The, the work is part of keeping us healthy, and then also like making our careers last longer than we want to. Completely. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree with you, and I really appreciate you know even in your in your collective like advocating for that like the process is supposed to be part of the show or the performance or whatever um and and saying that too like i want to hear a little bit too about the clown performance that you did with with frog and hand caretakers was the show what a what a fun little addition to the the summer company i love clown i want to hear about like how you how you took you know, characters and brought them to life. I, I imagine that you had to also interact with audience members to make these these characters come to life. So tell me more about it. Caretakers was a really, it was a lovely show um, and was our, our purpose of the show was about bringing joy to our community, to our audiences, spreading joy. So needed. And this concept is a beautiful concept Mm -hmm. um and i really appreciate so andrew and alice were the you know curators of this process and designed the show and how we were going to go out to the audience and um how we created these clown characters and who who they are what their story is and Mm. um and it was 
it was really I mean it's so needed Brie you could really feel when we went out mm. um you know, I, one audience member, she, she just stopped and she just raised her hands and she's just like, God bless you. Wow. Oh my. It, so there was some really, Spiritual. there was some really intense, um, moments, like interactions with audience members and, or them just saying, oh wow, this is the highlight of my day. Oh. Or, um, we had one of our moments, we had a, one audience member was in a balcony <laughs> And he ran down from his balcony <laughs> to come and, you know, say hello to us. Mm-hmm. And I, it was it was very beautiful. I felt that, okay, audience members are, we're in need of just laughter. Yes. Playfulness. Totally. Being goofy. Clown is perfect for that, too. And clowns yeah. are just, <laughs> I mean, we were just very naughty clowns. <laughs> um we so we we yeah it was very very enjoyable and I feel that audiences and also I mean it started with us having to find the joy in ourselves mm. and I feel that was a great I really appreciated that recognition that it needs to begin with us mm. being in a joyful place totally how can we spread joy if we ourselves are you know yeah it's come in a place of like turmoil super false <laughs> yeah <laughs> source yeah yeah so Fantastic. they really did begin by okay you know how do you find the joy in you need to find that joy within and then you're going to be sharing that joy. Amazing. So it was very beautiful and I, I think it was a very, people responded positively to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Frog in Hand is so great about like having multiple little performances everywhere. Like they even have one coming up called War of the Worlds. A little bit of it was, was performed at um, the Toronto Fringe, but um, there's like a three-part audio that's that's available online yeah, right now. Yeah. It's available till December 31st, too, which is like, okay, that's amazing. Yeah. You can listen to it on your own time, I guess, right? Yeah, War of the Worlds mm-hmm. Reimagined. Um, it's, a, it's a really wonderful audio, audio series, and... For me, for me, that series, I I look at that and I see, I feel it's amazing how we've adapted as performers, because this was the first Frog and Hand's first audio mm, series. Okay. Um, and I know audio drama is something people have been trying to play with now as a yes. format and and sound and even you getting these cool mics, you know, <laughs> learning about sound and how the sound it's work. Very fun and to play with. What up? You know? <laughs> Um, so I, the sound design also is so beautifully done wow. in these pieces. Um, and really, I feel really transports, transports audiences into these spaces that, that Andrew, Colleen and Callahan have created. Fantastic. Uh, so yeah, definitely check that out. Mm-hmm. It's a link it cool below. sci-fi series. And yeah. Yeah. Three parts, yeah, and Algonquin Tapes was the part that was already released at the Toronto Fringe, at but the then fringe. there's Last Day and Back on the Air. Back on the Air sounds really exciting, because it's like, it seems like the big, you know, epilogue to finish off. Yeah. There is actually also an epilogue. So there's an epilogue oh, okay. written by Andrew, too. Oh, gotcha, okay. There's an epilogue, uh, Grandpa's Monument. Oh. So there's an epilogue, too. Oh, there's a Grandpa character. Oh, wow. Very yeah, exciting. Andrew, written by Andrew, so... <laughs> Um, yeah, definitely, definitely check that out. And mm-hmm. yeah, the Algonquin tapes is again. This is a theme, right? Mm. Andrew and Colleen, nature. Yes, the true lovers I of mean, nature. Frog in hand. Frog in hand. <laughs> it's very nature filled. So there's Fantastic. a lot of that. There's a lot of that. This character also in Algonquin tapes is she's she's saying very clearly, "I need to get out of the city. Mm. I need to. I need to go." And see the trees. That's going to be a lot of people's monologues, That's a lot right of now, isn't it? <laughs> Get I think it's going to resonate with a lot of people for yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, yeah. And then as well, you are choreographing a contemporary piece. Yeah. Emphasis on contemporary. <laughs> At the Bollywood Monster Mashup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that is it supposed to be like a Halloween themed thing or? I don't. Maybe. Maybe not. Now I mean, that you're saying that, <laughs> I wonder myself. I think of the um, Monster Mash, but it, but yeah. it's, it's coming out, I guess, because it's a it's a Facebook live stream. Yeah. On September 10th and 11th. 10th and 11th. Yeah, wow. 10th 11th at 6 p.m. EST. Mm. 
um, on Bollywood Monster Mashup's Facebook Live page. Oh, okay, amazing, amazing. <laughs> so yeah, there's two there's two pieces um, that are part of that. So one piece I choreographed um, called Bratna, which means prayer in Hindi. Okay. Um, and that is a it's a contemporary dance piece um, that is drawing inspiration. And using a lot of elements of this practice that I am a student of, Galeri Baitu, mm-hmm. um, which is the oldest martial art form in the world from Kerala, India. Incredible. Um, and then our second piece is um, to the song Ina Mina Dika, which is a uh, from the golden age of Bollywood and okay. is sung by Kishore Kumar, who is a, a legend. A legend. He's uh, known as a very famous actor and singer, and so. That piece is um, kind of mixing. Is yeah, Colleen has done a really beautiful job, and mm-hmm. we. It's great because Colleen and I ha- were having these conversations about the pieces. Of it was it was so wonderful because Colleen said right away, "Okay, I think you should choreograph. We're gonna have two different energies. Mm. You know, a fun, goofy, silly, playful energy, and then you know we can have a." a little grounded and mm, and it was great because she said okay Ankita you do the grounded one because Galeri Baidu has that you know feeling of groundedness yes, and, yeah. and I will do this really fun piece and so I think together it's a really it's yeah. a lovely combination absolutely ha- we have fun in both pieces in different ways and it's it's a great combination so. sounds great yeah, yeah. It sounds like a nice palette of of uh you know, energies and in, in, in as, as I watch this live stream to be able to sort of, you know, be excited by Bollywood dancing. It's, it's very energetic from what I've seen, Yeah. but then it would be very cool to, to sort of, I guess, are the, is the, is your piece after hers or before? We, I don't know how they're going to edit it necessarily, but we performed a, uh, her piece, Ina Mina Dika, we did first okay, and then Brathana we did second. Okay. Cause yeah, so, it'd be a nice little cool down. Yeah. Kind of yeah. bringing it back after all of this like silliness. All the high yeah. energy. Yeah. And Fantastic. Brie, I yeah. get to wear a mustache on stage. Ooh, I'm just saying. Very I was very masculine. Ex- I was very excited. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of masculine, see, <laughs> see, there's some themes here I'm recognizing when I'm, when I'm speaking with you. you know? Oh, fantastic. Um, <laughs> But I was very excited about that. Colleen knew. She sent me a picture of my mustache when uh, it came. And she's like, Ankita, your mustache has a ride. <laughs> as long as it doesn't, uh, you know, sweat off. I always feel like with, with facial hair, I'm yeah. always worried it's going to just, like, totally start drawing down my mouth. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those fun, like, you know those uncles who have these oh, yeah. curly mustaches? Is it one of those? Yeah, yeah. It was really <laughs> That's fun. That's fantastic. It was really fun. It was my first, my first time wearing a mustache on stage. So yeah. I was thrilled. <laughs> Very cool. Like, yes. That's amazing. Okay, yeah. yes. It's coming out very soon. Um, I think that's all we had to talk about. So many things. So many so busy many but very mindful projects that you have going on. Um, I do want to give you a chance to, to plug anything else or just even to, you know, tell people where they can find you online. Make a oh, my gosh, yeah. Oh, Brie, you're giving me the, the spice. Okay. <laughs> um, which, um, plug it? I don't... I guess uh, my exciting announcement, like my personal artistic exciting announcement, is that I just got a a grant from the Canada Arts Council. So that's my first, that's my first major grant. Um, And I'm working on, it's, I'm over the next few years, I won't say how many years, but uh, I'm working on a three-part film series, short film series. Okay. So three dance films. And the first dance film I I am creating with my dancer mother. Oh. So I'm really, I'm just starting to energetically get into this. And um, I haven't even shared with everybody involved in the grant that this has come through. (laughs) I'm, I'm just kind of, I have to sit down and really relook at all my numbers that I put and yeah. the scheduling and, um, but it feels good. It feels good to be entering September with funded work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It feels good. It's a new year, like you said. It feels you know. good. Yeah, rejuvenating. Because um, so much of the last bit has been just working and trying to figure out the funding as we go Mm -hmm. um so it feels really good and i'm yeah i'm excited to this will be my directorial debut Woohoo! so yeah 
Please let me know when it comes will, out or, or if it's in the next, you I'm know, pumped. three years or whatever. Yeah. And we can come back and talk about it more. Oh my God, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And you said handles? Like what? Yeah. Like if, where social do people media find stuff? you? Yeah. Okay. If they want to learn more about you. Um, I'm sure they I are. would say definitely, well, Frog and Hands, Frog and Hands handles. Mm-hmm. I'll um, link that below. Yeah. So will you link, because I don't know exactly if it's frogandhand.com. I believe it is. It is? I okay. I believe I've done enough stuff okay. on their website okay. that it is So, yes. www.frogandhand.com. <laughs> and Frog and Hand is also on Instagram That's and right. on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the name of my collective is Not Dunky Creations. So, we are notdunkycreations.com. N A U T A N K I Creations. Dot com. Thank you for that. Um, and we are also on Instagram at notdunky.creations. Uh, and we're also on Facebook. We, we're do, we have to do it all these days. You have to do it all. There's no option. <laughs> <laughs> and even I was, as I was looking at, at Nantunky's um, Instagram today, there's this wonderful film about, um, like, oh, I can't remember what it's called. Oh, no. Um, where the two of you are walking into a studio and there's a to-do list on the side. Yeah. I Nidia absolutely and I. loved that film. Or that, did you, that yeah, did you get a chance I to did. see that? Yeah, yes. this is it. Oh, I'm Some so Some incredible glad. points were made in that to-do list too. So cool. everyone should go check that out. So yes. I will, do, I, that to-do list mm-hmm. is written by um, a beautiful writer in India, Deepika Arvind. Okay. Um, who has I have learned a lot from she's been a mentor to me and so she has been she was putting out different kinds of reflections throughout the pandemic and Mm. this list um, she had created and it just felt I really resonated with it it's so accurate isn't it scary isn't it like just even the talk about hustle and like and how to um, you know keep your schedule busy but not too busy and everything. I yeah. I, yeah. I was sitting there uh, on the streetcar reading it and I just thought, okay, well, that's my life explained. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just like that Completely. in a to do list. <laughs> Completely. This was how we yeah. opened our festival, actually. Oh, fantastic! Um, so we opened it with this. Okay. Um, because you know, one of our themes is we're trying to uh, show the artist at work. What does the artist at work look like? Mm -hmm. And so through this kind of sharing of process, we wanted to address as artists a little bit what the pandemic has been like without us just showing, oh, we dance, we do this. Yes, we do all those things, but there's, what are we thinking, you know? So it it turned out that this piece by Deepika Arvind, and then I wrote a piece called, um, what does the artist at work look like? I wrote a short piece. So we combined this list and that piece into this. Is that the voiceover in the the film? Yeah, that's the voiceover. Fantastic. I'm so glad it resonated because the point is to really, we want artists to see that and and be like, yeah. I'm a big supporter Feel of it. it, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this podcast is all about that, all about opening the curtain Please. on the process. So Please. thank you for making that, Please. and everyone go check it out. So it's cool. And this line, right, Brie? Hope with caution. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Power through exhaustion. <gasps> yeah, no. That Deepika wrote this beautiful line. I'm going to have to read that. And then there is, and then we end by saying, all I know is I am little without my art. And that art will always find a way. Fantastic. It's so needed right now to hear that, too. I think we, we have to... A lot of our work is figuring out how to wake up and, and keep doing it. I think we should just end like that. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for sharing everything that you have oh, today. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Marie. you for making time to come down from Brandon. Thank you for Brandon. inviting me into your beautiful place i'm loving it (laughs) please come back now we're gonna have a drink yes (laughs) sounds good (laughs) goodbye people Thank you so much for listening to the Art Versations podcast. Please help the podcast community continue to grow by clicking subscribe or follow on your podcast platform and leave a review. As well, follow the podcast on Instagram at Art Versations Pod. You'll find photos of the guests you just heard, plus highlights and quotes from each episode. Let's keep the Art Versation going. Send in a DM with your thoughts about art and any questions you might have for guests. Special thank you goes out to Jen Marquez and Maxim Bartnowski for their contributions. And thank you, listener. Till next time.